Welcome guys to my channel. Uh, this is Miss Vijjesh. I hope guys you have subscribed, you have shared and you have liked. Uh, we are here today. We are having our conversation on education in Denmark. And we are happy to have our first guest. Welcome Vivian to our, our channel. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. So uh, You're welcome. Yeah. And I look forward to our discussion. Yeah. Uh, I hope it's going to be informative to all you. So yeah. So uh, can we start can you start by telling us about yourself? Like uh, how many how did you come to Denmark? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, of course I've, as you heard, my name is Vivian. And I came to Denmark about four and a half years ago as a student. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I came through a folk school, it's called a Hoi school in dance. And uh, it's uh, a school whereby you learn about uh, Danish culture and about uh, sustainability. And it also gives you a chance to just uh, see if Denmark is a country that you'd love to stay in or build a life in. So I went through that school for about uh, eight months. And then after that, I applied to university. So, yeah. It was, I got a visa from Kenya, I applied in Kenya, so I applied for the boys school in Kenya and it took about uh, four months to get my visa and then from that I came to Denmark and I was at the school for eight months and at the beginning of the eighth month, it was uh, the open season for applications for September start, so I did my application to two universities and it was very straightforward, so they just asked about uh, your background, if you have any studies, I was applying for master's. Vivian, uh, before we go to your master's education, yeah. please can you tell us what does one require mm -hmm. to qualify for the focus school? Yeah. yeah. Uh, for the focus school, you just need uh, to have completed your high school or you need to have a bachelor. Mm -hmm. It's really open because they're not very stringent with the rules in that sense, but they just want you to complete some level of high school education, at least as a basic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all they need. And they also need to know that you're interested in studying in Denmark after that. So that's also one of the requirements. Do they check like, because I understand like in Kenya, we mm. have like the grades. Yeah. Is there a certain grade that is required for one to qualify? Well, for them, of course, they expect you to join university after. So they will try to look into your grades also, just so that when you come here and then you can apply, mm. you can also get a chance to get into university. So I'd say there is a certain grade they need also. It's not too high, mm. but it's something everyone can uh can get yeah yeah uh, okay and now uh i think we'd like to know about when you come for the focus school mm -hmm. what do you study is there a subject that you study on what it, is it all about it depends on which uh, focus school you also go to the one i went to we had about five uh lines of study, they call them lines of study, and they took the international one, which was focusing on sustainability, and uh, they call it a green future. So we were learning about everything from greenhouse gases and uh, greenhouse farming, everything to do with sustainability, up upcycling, recycling, all that. So from there, we also got to travel to Malta. They have like international trips for the students. Mm -hmm. We also got to travel to Malta, and that was like a student holiday, of course, a learning holiday. And then on top of that, we also went to different uh, places in Denmark that taught us more about the history of Denmark. So there was museums and cultural centers and all that. So there's the international line and then there's the Danish language and culture that you go and immerse yourself strictly on da everything Danish, from the food and the language and the way the people communicate and behave. So it, it depends on which school you go to. But most people from Kenya normally go for the international line because you get to experience a little bit of everything. And okay, so they are international and there are some locals or what do you mean like it, international? Yes, it, uh, I say international because it's mixed. The whole school is a mixed. Yeah. They're also for Danish students who've completed high school oh, and they yeah. take like a year off to kind of figure out what they want to do with themselves, what they yeah. want to do with their lives. So some of them also go to those schools. 
So if you go there, there's none that is like strictly for internationals. They're always mixed. Because yeah. for them to also get support from the government, they have to have a percentage of Danish students in the school. So and uh, is it taught in English or do you study in both English and Danish? There's, uh, we had Danish classes there for foundations in Danish, foundation Danish. Mm -hmm. So it's taught in English. The main teaching language is in English okay. for the international language. Mm -hmm. But you also have like Danish classes for those who are interested. Okay. Yes. And uh, I have to go back. Mm -hmm. When you are coming for the focus school, yeah. did you pay any fee on? I uh, I had an agent. Yeah. I found him through one of the local newspapers in Kenya. And he's the one who handled my application. And that was uh, yeah four years ago. I'm not really sure if he still does it now, if he's still there. But he's the one who helped me find a school and do the application for the embassy. Yeah. And all that. yeah. I'm asking about when, when you, do you pay, like we pay for the school fees? Did you pay for the focus school tuition fee? Is there any fee? Yes, there is okay. a fee that you pay before, you, once you get admission, yeah. then you should pay for it and then go to the embassy because they'll ask if you really paid for it. So, it's so you have to pay first before... Before you come before to you, Denmark. Exactly. Okay. Do you pay you pay even before you get the visa? You can pay before you get the visa. Yeah. It's the safest way to do it mm -hmm. because it shows some sort of commitment that you're actually gonna do it. You want to come here, you want to study there. Okay. So for me I paid before I went to the embassy. Yeah. Yes. Okay, and then after our focus school, that when you you joined your masters? Yes. After mm -hmm. the eight months I decided well. It's a tiny country. It's a nice country. Everything looks fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, okay. So I wanted to do my master's and I checked because I already got admission into a university in Belgium. Mm -hmm. And then I realized for the same value mm -hmm. in Denmark, I would get two years plus an extra two years mm -hmm. after my master. And in Belgium, it would be one year and you're done. Yeah. So I said, okay, this is it. This is mm -hmm. the place I want to do my master's and, mm -hmm. you know, get to know about other things in the world. Yeah. So uh, I applied in uh, June, end of June, in 2015, and I got my response in July. And I also needed to pay the fee before starting school. Okay, can you take us through yeah. uh, the application process mm -hmm. for, the, for the master's degree? Yeah. Like from what is required, how to choose a course, mm -hmm. yeah, like... All right. Uh, when it comes to choosing the course, of course, that's the first thing you have to do. You have yeah. to know what you want to do. Then once you've settled for it, you have the list of the universities and all the courses they have in the various websites. And you also have to be careful in that it's uh, it's a bit, they're very straightforward about the master. You This is for the master. There's a, uh, they have a bit strict with the master you want to apply to. So it has to be somewhat related to the bachelor studies you did. So for me, I did international relations. Mm -hmm. And so I found it like only normal or only obvious to do something within the social sciences. So I narrowed it down to two universities and that was Waskele University and Olbo University. So I went to their websites and saw what they needed and I qualified with the prerequisite courses they needed. And then I applied to both of them because they also had like a bit of differences in the, sort of in the units that they had. So I was also interested. So I said, let me just apply for two so that if I get into one, it's still fine. Okay. Yes. So I applied for the two, paid the application fee. And when you do that, then you can, uh, I after I did that, I applied now for my visa extension. Uh, before we reach to the visa extension, yeah. I think we need to understand your journey during your master's that uh, master's degree yeah uh, we need to understand like is first uh is it possible for someone mm -hmm. to get direct to master's degree in denmark or do you have to go through the focus school it is, like you did it's very possible to go directly most people come in directly straightforward so if you don't want to spend all that time trying to figure out what you want to do with yourself then you very able to apply directly. So yeah. most people do that. Just go to their websites and find a course and write a motivational letter and apply directly. Because yeah. it's a very straightforward online process. Very straightforward, I would say. Okay, guys, as you have heard from Vivian, there are two ways that you can 
get into having your education in Denmark, you can go through the focus school and you can also apply direct to the master's degree that you want. Or also I can add you can get your education, the bachelor degree. You can also apply. Do you know anything about bachelor degree or for the bachelors, not so many universities in Denmark offer bachelors in English, yeah. but they are there. There are a few universities that do, but the courses are not so many, and they're also highly competitive. But there are bachelor opportunities, and uh, just to add on to that, Virginia, yeah. there's also one called the AP degree. It's a professional bachelor degree. They also have those in English. So there are actually options for those of you who've just completed high school, if you want to look into those. So there's the AP degree, if you do it for two years, then you can do your bachelor degree for another one and a half years or one year, and then you can do your master for two years. So the AP degree, it's not like, uh, I don't want to say that it's not a bachelor, but I think it's sort of like a bachelor, kind of. Is yeah. it like so, pre-university, like we, we say in Kenya, or bridging? I'd say it's more of like a diploma, higher diploma. Okay. Yeah, because you just do it for two years and then you can... Go for a bachelor for one year, one and a half years. Yeah. And they also have those in English. Okay, now can you tell us more? Like when you started your master's, uh, was it easy for you to raise the school fees or is it easy to get jobs, student jobs in Denmark? Or how are you financing your studies in Denmark? Oh well, yeah, that was a journey and a half. It was interesting. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, one thing I'd stress about is do your research before you come out here, especially with regards to education. Do your research. Talk to people. Find online uh, blogs. Find online uh, platforms where people discuss education in Denmark. Because what you read and what you come to experience out here, most of the time will be different. So do your research very well. And for me, when I came out here, I was quite sure I was going to get the white collar student job. And uh, yeah, shock on me, things turned out to be different. I realized that here students do the blue collar jobs. And uh, of course you have to work. If you, for an international student, you have 20 hours uh, a week to work. So within the 20 hours, if you have a job, you are able to earn enough to save up for your fee. Oh. Yeah, because the fee ranges from about uh, 5,000 euro a semester up to eight, nine thousand euro, depending again on the course that you're studying. So I was able to, my parents did pay mm -hmm. for the fee, but I was also able to like sort myself out in terms of now my personal use and all that money. So I was able to study and work with yeah. blue collar jobs yeah. and yeah, get some money. So you got some support from your parents? Yes, I did. Okay. Yes, I did. But oh. so that it's also able to support yourself fully based on the student job, if of course you plan well and yeah. So can we say maybe from from the first year on your start, mm -hmm. maybe you need some support from from your parent or from your guardians. And then afterwards when you when you establish yourself, maybe you, you get a job, maybe you can raise the money without the support. Yeah, I'd say if you have like, uh, just put some money aside for the first semester, because that's when you're still trying to find your way around and finding about all these jobs and stuff. So it would be good if you pay the first semester fee and then have something on the side mm -hmm. just to keep you going as you try to find something. Then after that, you should be confidently able to support yourself. I is, say. is it easy to get the jobs? <sighs> That's also another story, yeah. but uh, finding jobs in Denmark is all about networking. It's all about who you know, even as students. So if you go to class, talk to other students, tell them, hey, have you got a student job? Yeah. What are you doing? Do you know if uh, you guys have any space? Can you link me up to your manager? Can you link me up to your supervisor? Yeah. Of course, it's not easy, but uh, it's possible. Because for me, I actually reached out to a Kenyan whose number I was given by yet another Kenyan. So the whole network thing. Yeah. That's how I got my first job. Because I was to ask you, yeah. because you said uh, it's all about networking. There is a networking plays a big role in finding a job. Mm. Uh, did you get any any help from the Kenyan community in Denmark? That was my next question. Well, was it easy to get even the Kenyan community in Denmark? 
Finding the Kenyan community in Denmark wasn't so easy for me. I, okay. I'm going to say that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, the number that I got, it's all about finding just one person who's going to refer you to another person who knows another person. Yeah. So, yes, uh, the Kenyan, I wouldn't say the Kenyan community as a whole, but of course, yeah. individuals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, they did help where they could. Yeah. There's those who introduced me to the church that mm-hmm. I go to now, and yeah. there are those who introduced me to the workplace. Yeah. So, yeah, it depends. But I would say, if don't put all your eggs in one basket. As a Kenyan, if you come out here, don't say, I'm only going to look for the Kenyan community and stick to them, and I know they're going to help me. You know, be open minded yeah. and expect that people will disappoint you along the way, and don't have any hard feelings. So, just let it go. When someone says no, expect to know sometimes. When someone says no, when someone goes quiet, if you ask for help, it's normal. So you just let it go and talk to other people. I mean, it's Denmark. There's people from all over the world. Yeah. Yeah. And they're always willing to help. Yeah. That's nice. Okay. And now we talk about, uh, you, can you tell us like, only you point out three challenges mm-hmm. that you had that went through your studies that you can never forget. And how you overcame them? Whew. Three challenges that I never forget. Because the first one is uh, getting a job. Yeah. And in this sense, is uh, being thrown into the blue collar sector. It's not something that I expected, honestly. Yeah. Because I was always having this picture of okay, I'm going to come to Denmark. I'm going to get a student job in an office, and I'm going to work, and I'm going to do this. And then someone tells you, uh, you need to check in the hotels, and I was like, ah, okay. So that for me was a challenge. Because on top of that, I've never worked a day in my life. Okay. Yeah. So when you come out here and someone just throws you in, in the deep end, you don't know how to adjust to that. But with time, you meet people and you talk about your experiences. Yeah. And then you sort of come to understand that it's it's okay to do these things. It's yeah. okay to work in this sector. It's okay to do this. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you know what you want out of it. Okay. Yeah. So that's a challenge. Then the second challenge was uh, language. Mm-hmm. Because it was very important. Everywhere you went, they asked you to speak Danish. So I threw myself into the language school and I would have like work in the morning, then classes, then language school in the evening. So that's how I managed to do it. Because when you start with the language, it was free at that time for all the newcomers. So you have free language classes. So I took advantage of that also. And yeah. And then the third challenge was. Uh, I would say associating with the Danish students because they receive like a stipend for their studies. I don't want to say they're paid to study, but yeah, it's basically that. <laughs> and you have to work. So finding that balance when you put in group works with them. Yeah. Because for them, their life now focuses around studying mm-hmm. and studying and just making yourself better. For us, we have to think about, okay, how am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to do my language and finish it? And I also need to study and I also have home assignments to do. So that was also a challenge for me, okay. like uh, interacting with them. But then you realize that it's also about the effort you make and work-life balance. That's something that is stressed very much. You have to find like that balance. Yeah. You have to know how much time you spend on studies, how much time you spend on work, and how much time you spend meeting other people. Because it goes a long way even yeah. after you graduate. Okay, I have to go back to accommodation yeah during your studies uh were you living in within the the campus or is there hostels or how did you get your accommodation uh for me i actually went through uh there's a website there's a platform that people advertise things for sale in Denmark. it's called dba and uh i just went into dba and searched like uh vacant rooms because the apartment it's way too expensive for a student to rent a loan. So I looked out, like, I checked my finances. I was like, okay, I'm able to afford a room. So that's what I'm going to go for. So I went to DBA Mm -hmm. and wrote to the landlords that were writing, Mm -hmm. that had posted, Mm -hmm. because you can see they'll post what they're looking for and how much the house costs. And then I also tried to check something around my university. Yeah. Yeah. So I found one that was uh, fitting my, fit my budget. And I wrote to the guy and he wrote back and yeah. I went for a viewing and uh, I decided to settle for the place. It was way out of town, but yeah. I looked at it from the perspective of commute to the university. Yeah. If I was to bike from home to university, it's about four kilometers yeah. one way, and I was like, eight kilometers is nothing. So it was fine for me. 
and it was also affordable. It was okay. Yeah. So guys, you understand that like, when you're looking for accommodation, it's good to consider the distance between your campus and where you are living because it cuts your expense. Um, and now we'll talk about after you you have finished your school now, mm -hmm. you have graduated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? yeah. How yeah. was it? <laughs> oh. It's one of the best feelings ever. Yeah. Yeah. Because you look back and you're like, it's it's a grow it's a growth curve. It's yeah. like it only goes up. You you feel relieved. Mm -hmm. You feel happy. Yeah. And you feel like you're ready to conquer the world. So it it was it was nice. Keep yeah. in mind that in Denmark they don't put on gowns. <laughs> like all the graduation ceremony. You know that they have the black gowns yeah. and that. They don't have that. And then you throw the hat. And throw that. No, <laughs> not here. Not here. So if you're expecting one big yeah. fancy thing. Yeah. No. Of course you have, I think, options of hiring a gown somewhere to go take a photo in the studio, but don't expect the whole black gown, all the matching. No, no, not that. And on top of that, you get your diploma via the post. Yes. They send it to you via snail post. That's how I got mine. Like they send it through mail, yeah. your okay. diploma. Or you can yeah. pick it up at the school if you want. But yeah. So I think it's it was a whole different culture for me because expecting a party yeah. and everything. And, and like, the parent to come and celebrate, your family to come and celebrate with you. And it's like, no. So yeah. <laughs> you just tell them, I, I, I graduated. <laughs> like, yeah, they do like, you did have a party. You did have a party. There are no photos. It's yeah. like, no, but I'm done with school now. Yeah, so. I have my certificate. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's how it was with the graduation. Yeah. And then you started your life. Yes. Again, you're not a student. How did you manage to extend your stay when you're not a student in Denmark? Yeah. So Denmark, uh, for non-EU students mm -hmm. who have completed their master's and also PhD, yeah. Denmark has a visa that is called the establishment card and that one is uh, you have to have graduated from a, a public university in Denmark and you get two years to find a job or to start a business in Denmark so that's what the visa is basically about yeah. so they give you that chance like okay now you've graduated we'd like to keep you here so we'd like you to find a job within these two years or we'd like you to start a business within these two years yeah yes and on top of that remember you have six months on top of the two years you had for your master education because when you apply for masters yeah. you get two years student visa yeah. and they add you an extra six months mm -hmm. to just figure out what's going on okay yeah and then within that six months you should apply for the, uh, for the establishment extended. okay for the establishment yes okay so that's uh that's how i did it so i finished the six months yeah and then i applied for the establishment which yeah. gave me another two years so within these six years, you can work? The six? You are still valid to live in Denmark yes. and you can work? Yes. Okay. Yes, within that, you should be able to work. Just keep in mind that when your visa is almost running out, like the one I had two years for the master's and then six months, uh, you need to apply for the next visa up to not more than one month before it runs out. Like don't wait until yeah. it's running out and then you start running around with Yeah. That. You have to apply on time. And they also don't want you to apply too early. Yeah. Yeah. So you, they have the, in their website, they have, they have outlined like the time frames. Yeah. When they need you to apply and mm -hmm. all that. Yes. Okay. And take us through the process of applying for the establishment card. The requirements. How did you go about it? Uh, what is required? They require that, of course, you're done with your master studies. Uh -huh. You have to attach that. And you also have to show that you have a job that pays you a minimum of uh, 7,000 kroner. That's about 1,200 euros every month. If you don't have that at that time, mm -hmm. then you need a bank statement of up to uh, 80,000 around thereabout. They keep updating it every year. So you need to have that bank statement to show that you can support yourself for at least six months in Denmark. Or you need to show a work uh, a job contract that shows that they're paying you this amount, 1,500 euros, 1,200 euros every yeah. month, just to show that you can support yourself in this time. So those are the main things that they needed. And of course, a valid passport and all that. So yeah, those are just the main things that they need. All that. Do you have an idea like how someone can raise all that amount of money? Or is it just a statement? It's, I would say it's just a statement. Like just yeah. have the money in your account and uh, yeah. 
because of course there are different ways to do it that people yeah. do it but they just want to see that it's there so most of the time i'd advocate that if you had a student job that paid you up to that amount mm -hmm. try to keep that job and talk to your supervisor yeah yeah because the main thing is the contract talk to them and say okay I'm, i've graduated i'm still trying to find my foot but i'd like to keep this job to help me apply for this visa yeah. most of them would agree because at the end of the day you're still working you're still earning so just ask them if they can extend your contract yeah and just make sure that they're paying you that minimum amount that is needed okay yes so can you ask like your family to send you money in their account or can you ask maybe friends so that you make your statement i believe that is also or is it only from what you are working uh I think uh, for that one it's a bit tricky. Yeah. Yeah, because of course with the anti-money, anti-money laundering rule in Denmark, if the family sends you that amount, yeah, it's also going to raise flags with the bank. Yeah. So it has to be you have to plan beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd still say that if you have a student job, don't quit after you graduate and say, "Hey, now I've, I've graduated, I don't need this job anymore." No. <laughs> don't please, go partying with the don't money. Don't go partying with the money. Please keep that money. Just yeah. let it. Yeah. yeah, just keep the money, keep the job until you find something else. Because it's going to help you apply for the establishment card. Okay. Yes. And then from there, you just, you get an establishment for for how long? Like you can live in Denmark you, with the establishment card. With the establishment card, you get two years. Yeah. Yes, you get two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, just on that note also, remember that uh, now the bachelor students and the AP degree, yeah. they're also allowed to extend. They also have uh, access to establishment card. Oh, that's good. Yes, yeah. because before it was only for masters and PhD. PhD yeah. And now they've given it to bachelors and uh, professional bachelor called okay. AP degree. So that's as of six days ago. Yeah. Yeah. So That's good news. Yeah. Oh, by the way, we are... Uh, you have to talk about Kenya student in Denmark. If I forget. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tell us more about it. Guys, you can find it on Facebook. For Kenya students in Denmark, that's yeah. an idea that came up during the COVID-19 crisis in Denmark. Yeah. That, or rather in the world. And uh, the first thought that came to my mind was, I remember how it was being a student and now everything has shut down. So I just thought, like, how are the students managing? How yeah. are the Kenyan students managing in this yeah. time? Because you don't, you're not working, school is back online, so yeah. how are they supporting themselves? Yeah. So I reached out to Virginia, you? Yes. Yeah, yeah. and I asked, like, what can we do about this? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then I told you about what I was thinking, and then we shared ideas. Yeah. And so this platform came up mm -hmm. to basically be a place where Kenyan students can come and share mm -hmm about the student life, about the student journeys and how to help each other out in yeah. terms of finding job, mm -hmm. in terms of how to access the resources that are available to students in Denmark. Yeah. And basically just to make their life as students in Denmark manageable. So that's how I came up with that idea of that. Yeah, it stemmed out from the corona time to support those in need, students yeah. in need. Yeah. And now I realize that there's also that gap yeah. where students come and they do not know where to start. Yeah. Yeah. All the all the information. It's a lot of information to take in. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have like someone to guide you through, it's easy to get lost in it because you miss yeah. out on some things. Yeah. For example, I didn't know that as a student at Roskilde, I could go to the Copenhagen University Library and just walk in and study there. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. And that's something that everyone else expects that you know automatically. But yeah. I didn't know that. So these are things like they might seem so little. Yeah. But they're quite important for students also. Yeah. Like knowing like you can go to any library in Copenhagen yeah. and study, mm -hmm. borrow books from any library. Yeah. And also sometimes you can attend some of the classes. You just walk in and talk to the lecturer and just mm -hmm. say you'd like to sit and follow through and just yeah. get a feel of it. So those are things that uh, I hope this group is going to help the Kenyan students with in terms of applications, how the application process is, yeah. how life is here. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Student cards, everything. Orientation as a student in Denmark. Are you planning for any mentorship program? Because now we know we have students in Denmark, but there's this problem of mentorship. You don't... Because we'll go back to the networking. Yeah. Before you get uh, someone you know, maybe through mentorship, mm -hmm. someone can 
can get the chance to understand how to get a job, how to make a CV mm-hmm. in Denmark. Yeah. What do you think about mentorship program? I think uh, it would also be good to have mentorship programs, yeah. especially for also student Kenyan students, because yeah. sometimes you're studying a course and you're trying to find a job. And I always say it's always a bit easier when you see someone you can look up to who understands. Like if you see another fellow Kenyan working in the IT sector or yeah. in the hotel industry and you can approach them and ask like okay how did you do this how is this different from home yeah how do i go about this and you can also reach out to probably a master student who did the bachelor that you're doing and ask them okay when you're writing your paper or your project how did you go about this yeah so i think mentorship is very important and we are hoping to partner with some of the mentorship uh, networks in denmark yeah so that uh, we can help students like get on the right track when they go out there i mean it's just paying it forward yeah basically yeah so guys uh if you're there and you feel like you can mentor someone uh feel free to contact vivian you can reach out uh, the facebook page it's called kenyan students kenya in denmark. students in denmark yes yeah feel free to write there if you have any information any questions mm-hmm. you can also write on that page will get back to you and you also you can comment on our channel we'll answer you we'll consider everything and if you're watching there and you have extra information that you can add please feel free to comment and give us that information it will help some someone somewhere mm-hmm. we are doing this to inspire the young people and to make them feel at home at home away from home, <laughs> away from home because did you did you experience any homesick a lot a lot <laughs> what, what do you miss most i missed the food yeah i missed the social life yeah i missed my friends and family but you learn i always say when you go outside when you go to a place that is not your country try to unlearn to learn because you come when you've known you know so many things or you think you know so many things but if you come with that mindset you will never learn so you unlearn to learn that's what yeah. that's my life motto like unlearn to learn give have space to learn more because you not know anything and no question is ever too stupid by the way ask even if it's you think it's basic just yeah. ask if there's always someone who's going to answer just ask whatever it is yeah okay thank you Vivian for giving us all that information it's useful information yeah. thank you so much Anytime. and thank you guys for watching we hope the information that we have shared it will be helpful to you guys and if you have any extra information please feel free to comment and uh, thank you for the support and continue to subscribe to comment and to share thank you hi <laughs> hi